Hello and welcome to the Pig Edge, Chagas Pig podcast with me, Kieran Carl, bringing you all the latest news, information, and advice to keep Irish pig farmers up to date. And for this episode, we're looking at value added pig meat with Ruth Hamill, Senior Research Officer at Chagas Ashtown. And I first asked Ruth to give me some background on pig meat in terms of its nutritious value, diversity, and its perception nationally and internationally. Worldwide pork is the most consumed meat, and it's hugely popular in many areas of the world, representing around 40% of meat eaten worldwide. Due to the long history of pork consumption and the popularity around the world, before the advent of refrigeration, numerous different approaches to preservation of the meat arose. And as a consequence, pig meat is really unparalleled in the wealth and diversity of processed products available that have developed in different parts of the world. It's a very nutritious foodstuff. Not only is it high in protein, but the quality of the protein is very high as well. As an animal protein, it contains all the essential amino acids in the right proportions for us to absorb and utilize. On the whole, pork uh, is quite lean. Some cuts are low fat with minimal fat content in the muscle. So for those seeking lean protein, many pork cuts would be a, a suitable source. And not only this, but pork is rich in iron and zinc. And for example, iron is held in the form of heme iron. So we can easily uptake and utilize the iron in pork for its uh, had its benefits in the in healthy blood, brain, and the immune system uh, compared to supplements. And it's also a source of many vitamins, especially B vitamins uh, and B12, which is just not really possible to glean from plant-based diets. Okay, so it has a lot, lot of good stuff going for it, which is great to hear. Um, your, your research team up in Ashtown, you're, you're focused on meat quality. What would be the main features that you'd be considering in relation to meat quality, you know, in fresh and, and processed pig meat? Yeah, so I suppose in, in fresh meat, the big focus would be on the sensory appeal, tenderness, juiciness, flavour. Uh, but our team has a wide range of research interests, not only on fresh meat, but also on processed meat product quality, the nutritional value of the product and targeting products to specific consumer groups. Um, I suppose in order to understand and improve meat quality, we're very focused on optimising the conditions of meat processing to deliver desired outcomes in terms of the sensory experience, the sensory perception, but also keeping in mind the um, the requirements from a technological point of view. So we want, we consider quality to encompass important issues at processor level as well, such as minimizing drip losses, improving color and um, reducing any defects that, that might occur. So meat quality, you know, it's influenced by the genetic background of the animal and and uh, some of the factors that influence pig meat quality are also a result of the production regime. So the diet of the pig, for example, would, would greatly influence the fat content and the fatty acid profile in the pork. So important aspects of quality like color and tenderness are very much influenced by the processing post-mortem, uh, but also stress in the pre or immediately um, the, the perimortem period or, or in, in life before uh, slaughter um, can influence the meat quality. So it's important to optimize animal handling to keep the animal stress levels to a minimum, not only for welfare reasons, but also to ensure high meat quality. Okay. And how, how has the pig evolved and changed over the years in terms of meat quality? In most modern commercial breeds and selection lines, the selection for green, lean growth has really been the driver um, for the modern commercial pig. So the breeds are very well muscled, they're fast growing and they're highly efficient in their in the production from the production side and in the, the uh, meat content. Now there's a growing interest um, in improvements in quality and you know for some commercial lines we want to try and address the gap that's there in terms of some factors that can contribute to the final sensory experience. Uh, for example, a certain minimum level of intramuscular fat content in the muscle adds to flavour and palatability in the meat. OK, and p- pig meat, I suppose it's traditionally it's been kind of commodity driven. Are there ways that we can move away from this? OK, so as I mentioned, pork is the most consumed meat worldwide, though in the past few years, chicken is is up and coming and approaching the the um, the market share. Um, but the market is huge for pig meat. But we do know from discussions with stakeholders in the pig value chain that there's something of a lack of understanding amongst the public on the the value in the diet and also the flexibility of pig meat, both fresh and processed. Okay. And how would this compare with like other meats? You know, would you consider chicken and and beef to be commodity type products? 
Well, there's been a lot of effort put in on the fresh beef side in recent years to differentiate. So processors have made gains in premiumization uh, through consistent focus on quality, really. And with regard to chicken, it has a very specific appeal and it's considered a lean protein, healthy and very flexible. OK. And if we were to look at that a little bit more detail, you know, what, what, what have been the main developments in beef products over the past 10 years or so? Yeah, so I suppose in in recent years, there has been a transition. So rather than selling live animals or carcasses to um, wholesale markets, um, a lot of uh, Irish beef now is being sold in multiple and uh, diverse boneless beef cut portions. So some colleagues in Chagas have have done some studies on the global value chain in this regard. And, uh, you know, we also observe it um, that... That also extended aging um, has been a very important feature and also grass-fed quality has been an important attribute to to differentiate and add value. And I would say that producers on the beef side have also been given clear signals to improve on quality with focus on uh, specific breeds that would have higher marbling content, such as Angus and Hereford. So there's a premium paid for for those breeds in many cases. And uh, producers are also benefiting from information now on the breeding value for meat quality of the top uh, bull sires through the information coming from research done in Meat Technology Ireland conducted by Chagas and the Irish Cattle Breeders Federation. So in the future, this is going to bring further benefits to improve eating quality in the beef herd in coming years. Okay, so there's plenty to learn there for for the pork or the pig meat side. Uh, In terms of the research that's been done in there, what's been done kind of in recent years on beef? So I suppose most of our research in Chagas is collaborative with the Irish and international universities, and we have a number of active projects with Walsh scholars focused on red meat quality and improvements in processed meats. So we have a lot of um, funding sources, including European funding, the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine, Enterprise Ireland and other agencies. Uh, One example I'll just give you is a large industry led project for beef and sheep meat called Meat Technology Ireland, which is hosted by Chagas and is in its second five year phase currently. So the first phase had an important emphasis on meat quality, which is continuing in phase two. A sensory survey was conducted on variability in beef tenderness and revealed that the proportion of tender beef had increased from approximately 80% to 87% um, in the time frame between 2004 and, and kind of the, the current period due to improvements in consistency of carcass handling and processing, as well as the assessment. And we've also looked at uh, specific carcass interventions to optimize for tenderness. So we've also assessed the impact of a number of interventions on quality and actually explored this through Marie Curie uh, linked projects which were connected with Me Technology Ireland to understand how this plays out at the muscle tissue level using proteomics approaches. And an important area of work in Meat Technology Ireland was the establishment of a very large sensory quality database by colleagues in the Food Quality and Sensory Science Department, uh, who conducted detailed trained panel assessments of progeny uh, from important industry sire, beef sires. And this database has been used by Chagas and the Irish Cattle Breeders Federation, along with genomic and genetic information to develop a meat eating quality breeding index. And this work was conducted through Meat Technology Ireland. There is also an extensive research program on food safety who and researchers took a whole chain approach to look at factors that impact on shelf life of packaged primals um, in beef and sheep meat and there was also active program on um, carcass characterization which I myself was involved in and the nutritional value of red meat and actually looking at opportunities in the circular economy. Uh, in the phase two of Meat Technology Ireland, there's a growing interest in digitalization and, sus- and sustainability are really uh, two major themes um, of the next phase of Meat Technology Ireland. So we're actually um, developing research program to enhance the incorporation of digitalization in uh, meat processing to enhance meat management systems, planning, logistics, improve information flow and transparency along the value chain. So this is actually a specific area where pig meat processing internationally is very advanced in terms of the prevalence of automation and processing. And some of the most automated plants in the world are actually pig plants. Um, And as I mentioned, a a very important focus for Meat Technology Ireland Phase 2 is in the area of sustainability. New projects have kicked off focusing on breeding for more sustainable animals and also um, more sustainable packaging systems. Other areas of research that are ongoing on beef in our department are focused on different aging uh, regimes and and innovate and 
including dry aging, which is being applied to Irish grass-fed beef. This is an international collaboration with colleagues in Spain, Uruguay, and New Zealand alongside Chagask. And we're also supporting work on a project to authenticate Irish grass-fed beef through spectroscopy in collaboration with colleagues in Chagask Beef Production and UCD. And a very important focus of um, work that I'm not hugely involved in myself, but my colleagues look at the potential to add value and upcycle elements of the carcass that are not consumed as food, the so-called fifth quarter. And our team has been successful in developing new applications for uh, side streams from processing, such as blood, into biodegradable bioplastics, which have great potential to replace fossil fuel derived plastics. OK, and I suppose it, moving on then from that internationally, if, if we've anybody that's traveling, you know, you see a great diversity of meat products, be it beef, chicken, uh, pork uh, abroad. What, what are other countries doing to create value for meat? So I suppose, yeah, for pig meat, um, I suppose there, 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 there would be huge diversity of products, as I mentioned, worldwide. So, you know, in Mediterranean countries such as um, Spain, Italy, Portugal, um, there's a lot of traditional, very high value um, pig meat products, the jamón uh, serrano, traditional cured products in Spain, Hamon Iberico, which is also um, a cured product, but from a unique kind of ancient um, black pig breed. And then the same uh, very premium product, Hamon Iberico de Bellota, which is reared on acorns and has a very distinct uh, fatty acid profile and a meat uh, high high intramuscular fat content. And Central Europe has a very wide range of, of products as well. And pork is very um, popular in the diets. In terms of research, you know, in terms of meat products a lot of um, researchers are focused on healthier you know healthier oils including um, maybe plant oils in some pig meat products and providing technological solutions to optimize quality and, and we're doing a lot of that as well and um, you know the the genetics uh, aspect and um, is an important aspect for premiumization as well and actually recognizing the value in maybe older pig breeds like the Mangalitsa pig in Hungary which is almost like uh, it's very heavily marbled and it's almost like the Wagyu beef of the the pig world um, and it's actually imported from Hungary to Spain to make these uh, very premium hams so you know there's a lot of um, opportunities there in terms of ex exploring the heritage and traditional methods and also looking at new ways to enhance products with um you know, ingredients like plant, plant oils, et cetera, as I mentioned. Okay. And so what can Chagas offer? You know, what sort of facilities are available and what can Chagas offer in terms of product development for pig meat? Yeah, so here at Chagas Ashtown, we have a, a European licensed pilot scale research abattoir. So this is uh, unique in Ireland and it gives us, we have a capacity to slaughter about 15 to 20 pigs per day. And this gives us great control to study and optimize post-mortem interventions that can be applied to the carcass. Um, our facility also includes extensive meat processing, cooking and cooked meat areas. And uh, Chagas Ashtown has also recently um, undertaken a significant investment from the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine to establish the National Prepared Consumer Foods Centre, uh, which is focused on all kinds of prepared consumer foods, including added value meat products. So within this centre, we've acquired a number of uh, new pieces of equipment to expand the meat processing suite. And these include a range of tumblers, injectors, choppers, and uh, there's also a dedicated packaging suite for the, the in the PCFC and so we have all the equipment needed really to make key types of pork products that could be of interest in terms of reformulation development of innovation in terms of products and that also allows us to investigate the factors that drive quality and nutritional value in in the product and some of the equipment allows um, exploration of premiumization for fresh meat as well so we have these dry agers which as I mentioned we're applying in in beef research at the moment and um, these dry agers can be used for fresh meat and also for dry cured products. So alongside these facilities to actually make and, and pr produce the product, um, you know, there's an emerging technology suite where colleagues have ultrasound, ultraviolet, cold plasma and pulse electric fields. So new technologies which actually have relevance to processed meat. And we have advanced equipment for food characterization in terms of techno functionality and the nutrient profile. And um, finally, we have a full sensory suite and capability to do detailed consumer studies 
and a microbial quality shelf life suite. And there's virtual and augmented realities and biometric technologies. So we can really understand the consumer's true reaction towards food products. So these facilities are available for our research. They're available for industry to access and actually make use of. And um, we also collaborate with colleagues in other Chagas centres, such as beef, sheep and pig production and the rural economy to examine um, areas of interest on meat quality from farm to the consumer's fork. Yeah, and I must just add that we, I, I had the opportunity to visit Ashtown there recently and see the facilities and, and they really are amazing and it, it gives me good hope for, for what opportunities lie ahead in terms of pig meat. In terms of what research has been done in pig meat, you know, what kinds of, of meat quality research has been done, you know, fresh meat quality and value added has been done in Ireland to date? So, yeah, there's been a lot of work has focused on optimizing fresh meat quality in terms of carcass interventions, also trying to delve in and understand the molecular mechanisms that affect meat quality. So that's work we would have done with UCD and also with Chagas Moor Park and the pig the pig department, the pig development department. Um, so, you know, some of the molecular mechanisms that affect meat quality also affect efficiency. So they're of interest to producers. So obviously we want to improve the efficiency of the product, but we also don't want to compromise on meat quality. So um, the best way to do that is to is to optimize both at once um, or at least make sure we're not having a a serious detrimental impact on meat quality when we're trying to improve for efficiency and sustainability. So we've also looked at um, different um, uh, genetic markers and explored the the porcine transcriptome to try and understand why um, you know meat that is ten- more tender is is that way. Maybe why pork that actually tenderizes very early post mortem does so in comparison to to later tenderizing. So. On the, on the processed meat side, then, a lot of research in this area has focused on traditional processed meats that are very popular in Ireland. And it has been done, a lot of this work has been done in collaboration with UCC and also UCD. Um, but obviously, we, we collaborate with all the universities um, and, and institutes of technology. And the research has looked at a range of approaches to tackle issues that are of public health interest, like um, reduction in, in fat, reduction in salt, and also the addition of healthier ingredients, clean label products, and so on. So, you know, we, we have a, a wide range of, of research on uh, processed meat products for, you know, beef and pork. And if we look at the markets, what opportunities are out there that maybe we could capitalize here in Ireland? There are, you know, huge opportunities in further processing. So, um, you know, pig meat is the third largest category of exports after dairy and beef. And even though just 20% of pig meat exports are added value products, so products with, with at least one step of further processing. Um, so even though they only account for 20% of pig meat exports, they actually account for more than 40% of the economic return. So, you know, this gap actually indicates the potential to increase the export value of pig meat by increasing the proportion of pork that is value added. And this also holds equally for the very important domestic market. So, you know, there are huge opportunities there. And, you know, the market is not a uniform, you know, the the consumers are not a uniform group of people. So, you know, we connect with um, our colleagues in the Rural Economy Development Programme who apply consumer science, consumer uh, research. And we try and understand better the, the cohorts within the population and how we can best meet their needs. So, you know, we previously identified and had a large project that um, focused on older adults and targeting their new specific nutritional needs. So as we as we age, we have a greater requirement actually for protein compared to younger cohorts because, you know, um, our muscles become vulnerable to sarcopenia and wasting. And uh, actually red meat is, is a great source of some of the amino acids that can help to offset this, uh, specifically branch chain amino acids like leucine, which actually stimulate um, muscle protein synthesis and it's very important to also kind of look at eating opportunities for protein and um, throughout the day so protein is huge and um, but 
definitely the the different stages so snacking opportunities um providing smaller portions of 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 um protein but with of meat let's say but with a higher protein content uh, are are very valuable for those who maybe have a smaller appetite um as we get older um but but actually need that that higher amount of protein so additionally as we get older you know we have um we have issues with maybe dentition and texture so even though meat is a very good source of protein sometimes we can actually you know provide solutions to improve the texture and new approaches to um, target products specifically with a with a softer texture but still delivering an acceptable um sensory performance for for older people um obviously there's also uh, athletes and people who are very active and looking to build muscle mass um you know protein is is very important um nutrient for for those people and uh, at all life stages, including children as well, growing growing children. So protein is a huge trend. Um, there is a, you know, in, in light of, you know, people's considerations around, um, you know, organic, antibiotic-free, welfare-friendly production systems, these are, you know, increasingly desired by consumers. And those kind of production systems should be, you know, there, they should be able to command a premium and, and, and add value to products efficiency and sustainability of food production is the challenge of our time so you know with pork more of the carcass is used compared with beef or sheep meat and the carbon footprint is is more favorable maybe than those species but from a production point of view sustainability is a huge driver and uh, consumers are looking at the meat but not also the diet of the animals and where it's sourced from and asking themselves is it sustainable so Irish pig production has a heavy reliance on imported feed and there's limited information on local and more sustainable feed ingredients that could represent waste to another industry example brewing um you know fruit processing and so on but could be suitable for inclusion in pig diets so a new focus on the circular economy would be beneficial as well in terms of the opportunities for research so looking to the future, that's where you're going, really. So what is needed if we look to the future? So I suppose we need to take a whole chain approach and we need to increase the program of activities to focus on diversifying the categories for Irish pig meat, provide information for processors on new product templates using innovative processing to provide products that are um, not only understood by target markets, but also desired by those par- target markets as well. How soon or can we expect to see pork goujons or pig jerky on, on the shelves here in Ireland in the near future? Yeah, so, you know, there's definitely a need to explore what's popular for meats such as beef and chicken, which have, you know, a, a high market share and which have provided solutions that are increasingly popular to consumers seeking protein in recent years. Here in Ireland, convenient breaded products like goujons tend to be made from chicken or fish whereas in japan pork katsu is a very popular dish which is a breaded um breadcrumbed uh, pork product and likewise in in central europe you know very uh, desired products traditional products like schnitzel from austria austria uh, so these are very popular worldwide so there's absolutely no reason why not pork and uh, you mentioned jerky and another popular product biltong which is relatively new to ireland but again it's proving very popular with consumers who are seeking to build muscle mass, lean muscle mass, active people, athletes. So these products, some of them are traditionally made with beef or game, but they can definitely be applied to pork and dried meats is definitely a a popular upcoming category uh, for the future. Excellent, Ruth. That's been really informative uh, show today. Really, really enjoyed uh, hearing what you had to say and and more so looking forward to what your research team, yourself and your research team are going to to bring to us uh, and bring to the table, if you'll pardon the pun, in in the next few years. Uh, So thanks for joining us today. I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Ruth. Thanks, Kieran. That's it for the latest episode of The Pig Edge and my thanks to Ruth Hamill for joining me on the show. Tune in to The Pig Edge for all your pig production news and don't forget to rate, review and follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss a show. And for more information on farming, go to chagas.ie. I'm Kieran Carl and thanks for listening.